Hello everyone. We are here today with a big collection of reverb pedals. There's 10 of them in total. And we're gonna be using them with synths. Obviously because these are all reverb pedals, we're dealing with a lot of repetition. So we're not gonna be going through like each and every aspect of each pedal. This is more of a creative approach, like a standout features or uh, Easter eggs of each pedal. A lot of the information here today is actually from reps from each of these companies. Reps that know these pedals inside out. And of course, there's gonna be a focus on how each of these pedals sounds with plenty of playing examples. In terms of the organization of this setup, when you have so many pedals like this, so many units, it definitely helps to have a rack, or in this case, actually two racks. So this is the Pedal Train XD18, the bigger rack, it's the best way to keep your wires organized. On the right, we have a much more compact, smaller model, the Pedal Train Metro 24. Also, our pedals today are powered through the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 3, which is Again, just a great way to stay organized. With a setup like this, it's really easy to have like a spaghetti effect and this is the best way, this is like the remedy to spaghetti effect right here. In terms of support, you guys know the deal. I love making this sort of content for you guys, but it's not free to make, so your extra support goes a long way. Whether it's liking, subscribing, using the affiliate links in the description of this video, there's a lot of affiliates lots of gear. That doesn't cost you anything extra. And of course, if you're in North America, use Sweetwater. They're gonna have pretty much everything that you're looking for. This video is also sponsored by DistroKid. So if you're looking for a way to officially distribute your music to major streaming platforms, go with them. And that's actually another way of supporting. If you do end up deciding to go with them, there's a discount link in the description of this video. If you use that link, it helps me a lot. Thank you, you guys are the best. Let's get right into it, shall we? And the first thing we'll look at is the Red Panda Context 2. I like the simplicity and size of this pedal. If you're looking for an ambient sort of thing with context, Cathedral is definitely the best setting for that. If you'd like to add some movement to this, you can play around with modulation. The grain setting, along with modulation rate at minimum, emulates the Ursa Major STS-282 Space Station reverb, which is a very early digital reverb, and it creates this sort of unique atmospheric ghostly sound. And then there's gated as well as reverse. So these are non-linear reverbs. With reverse, I find that it really helps to set the blend to 100% so you could really hear that like reversed effect. You could also get interesting textures by setting the blend to mostly wet or fully wet and tweaking the pre-delay and decay so that the note attack and reverb buildup blend into this sort of complex attack. In terms of the design factor of the pedal, we're looking at something that's uber compact for what it's capable of doing. It's also worth mentioning that Context receives CV in, so if you want to use uh, an expression pedal to control any of these parameters, you could certainly do that. The Chase Bliss CXM 1978 also supports CV control. Upon the release of this pedal, especially on social media, everyone just lost their minds. Just because of the aesthetic. It's such a beautiful looking pedal. I love the design of it. Motorized faders, which yes, is extremely cool. These faders definitely change the experience of the pedal and I would say identifies this in this comparison as the most tactile pedal of the bunch. And I just find that the workflow is really unique and interesting in particular with like the combination of these three knobs here. So outside of every possible combination here just sounding absolutely awesome, you could see here on the left in the small print reverb time bass and mid, so these are all tied in together. So I'm gonna throw the reverb up to a ridiculous amount on these drums. Uh, so bass, let's throw the bass up. So we're hearing the bass, more bass in the reverb and also just a ridiculously long uh, reverb time on that bass as well. Same thing with mids, works in the same way. But then we have this like cross EQ here. So let's say if the bass is back up, we're choosing which frequency we really want to accentuate. So it's like all of these three work together, which is really interesting. Uh, it's a workflow that I wasn't super familiar with before this. 
So I find that you could just really dial things in with these three faders here. And that's pretty basic. There's a few Easter eggs that I like to get into with this pedal as well. There's a sparse mode that engages if you set to hall mode, so that's red, and if the diffusion is set to low, which will sound kind of like a cloudy cluster of multi-tap delay. Another Easter egg setting is having the diffusion set to high and the clock set to lo-fi. In this case, the pre-delay knob will set the echo time. Next up is Walrus Audio Slower. Definitely one of my favorites in this example for like creepy sort of textures. It kind of reminds me of the night sky in that way actually. I find that rain is the creepiest uh, algorithm on this pedal. And on the same setting, so rain, if you turn the width down to narrow, you get like a similar texture, but rhythmically it's a bit more gated, so I find that it works well with drums or rhythmic patterns in general. With modulation depth turned all the way up, now you've got something pretty interesting. Let's jump to the secondary feature of the mix knob, which is pretty unique. You can press and hold bypass and turn the mix knob to control the left-right panning of wet reverb versus the dry signal. So you could turn the mix knob counterclockwise to pan the wet signal to the left and clockwise to pan it to the right. And then putting the mix knob in the middle to center everything. And what about Mercury X? Which I think needs a bit of a dust. If you're already familiar with Maris's granular delay pedal, LVX, then you pretty much already completely understand the layout of this pedal. It's essentially the exact same size and parameter layout as LVX, but in the form of a reverb pedal. Although it's a lot more than just a reverb pedal. At its core, this is Mercury 7, another reverb that you're probably familiar with, but expanded into eight different custom reverbs in a modular form. I've actually done a full dedicated review of this pedal in combination with the OP-1, so here's that video. To summarize in this video though, this is for sure the most complex pedal of the entire bunch. Like once you dive you know, beneath the presets of the pedal, you have so many more parameters and sub-parameters to work with, right? I'm currently on the Chant preset, which I really like. I'm gonna dive in. So on the first page, we have our on the surface controls. This is like the most tactile part of the pedal, right? So these are like our performance controls, I guess you could say. After that, there's a, a page for pre-delay, another page for reverb, you could change the reverb type, the dynamics, preamp, filter, pitch, modulate, mix. On this reverb page, we have structure, so we could change, like completely change the uh, quality of the reverb. Another interesting thing we could add to this riff is pitch, so we'll head over to that page, which is right here. Turn this on, there's like a lo-fi pitch option. Right, so we have right and left pitch in this case. So we have a perfect fifth on the bottom and I'm assuming it's, yeah, perfect fifth on top.
So all in all, I would say the most precise pedal here in terms of sound design and actually like sculpting your reverbs. But that of course comes with having to learn how to actually use the pedal. There's a lot more menu diving as well. Something to consider that might not be your thing. Let's get creative with the RV200. And the first, and I would say my favorite algorithm here is Artverb. This is actually a new algorithm that's not on the RV500 or the RV6, but it is here on the RV200. And just a little side note about the RV500, it's actually the parent pedal of the RV200. So it's definitely more powerful in terms of control and routing. And it shares a lot, but not all algorithms uh, with the RV200. Artverb is especially cool on more open, like sparse melody type of things. It essentially creates an ARP on any note that sounds. It's one of those things that just sounds good on everything, but in a very specific way. I would recommend just maxing out the level to get like the full effect of this algorithm. Slow verb, which is the next preset over, has like a similar and interesting effect. It's very lush and creative sounding and it adds like a nice smooth, like perfectly mixed note over top of yours. So another one that kind of just automatically sounds good on everything. Just like with Art Verb, I like to have this one pretty much maxed out as well. I find that it just sounds so good harmonically. Poly effects verbs. This is the only pedal in the bunch that does IR impulse response, which is actually not something that I'm super familiar with yet, but it essentially means that you're able to record your own convolution into the pedal or like your own flavor of reverb into the pedal. And that's essentially what all of these different presets are. It's also my understanding that you could download or purchase IRs and import those into the pedal as well. You don't necessarily have to create your own IR. But if you just like to use the pedal in a much more, you know, simple and quick way, this makes for a really great preset machine. You have just a bunch of presets to choose from, right? So within each of these IRs, you have eight presets uh, to work with. This is the only touchscreen pedal here, which I guess makes it less tactile than the rest of the pedals, but even so, it still feels pretty nice. And you have these basic controls with each preset as well. Onset is pre-delay for your reverb. Mix and low cut, obviously we already know what those are. And then smoosh over here on the right spreads and expands the sound particles to fill the void. The Eventide Black Hole. In this comparison, I would say that this is the pedal I would choose to make really huge, reverbed out soundscapes. And so the name is very suitable. The parameter control is super easy and on the surface, six knobs to work with. With this light off, you're controlling the primary parameters, so mixed gravity feedback, and then you have the smaller print underneath in which case this red light controls those parameters. So on a riff like this with the pedal on, immediately this riff just becomes like twice as big. I often will EQ a lot of the lows out of my reverb, otherwise I find that it just sounds a little bit too uh, muddy within the mix. And if I wanna add even more motion to this massive sound, we can play around with the modulation depth and rate. Another feature of this pedal, which once again fulfills its name, is the freeze function. If you want to freeze on a particular part of your sequence or your riff, say right here, my mix knob is fully up right now, so you're really hearing where it's frozen. The Strymon Night Sky is kind of like the blue sky if it was a troublemaker crack addict. By the way, I've done a full dedicated video on this pedal if that's something that interests you, here it is. I see the Night Sky essentially as a reverb pedal with extended synthesis. You've got LFO modulation right here, so speed as well as depth, shape, There's also a shimmer section right here where you could choose the interval of your shimmer and also the mix of your shimmer independently from the overall mix. 
Another great thing, one of my favorite things about the Night Sky is that there's a dry mix knob as well as a reverb mix knob. So this just gives you a lot more control over the level of your mix. So let's say with any of these other reverb pedals, if I blast the mix, you're basically losing all of the dry signal. With the Night Sky though, you could have a nice fat dry mix and then a ton of reverb over top of that. So it's just a much bigger like cleaner signal I, I guess you could say the next two pedals ventress dual reverb as well as empress reverb they're definitely like older pedals in the game but are absolutely still relevant uh, especially for synth users despite their age i wouldn't be surprised if either empress or source audio release like updates to these pedals to sort of bring them back to life again not that they're they're dead <laughs> but before getting into these two veterans let's talk about today's sponsor distro kit they are the most affordable music distribution platform out there geared towards independent artists like myself possibly you let's get into reasons why they're great now in terms of what's new they recently released a smartphone app which makes checking your important distro kit stats easy and accessible the app is now available on Android through the Play Store essentially everything that you've been able to do on the DistroKid desktop app you're now able to do through your smartphone in fact here's a list of key features that the app offers you you might want to pause it now if you want to check them out. In today's day and age, we all know how many hats we have to wear as artists and producers. It can just be a lot. So write the music, produce the music. Then you've got to create content to promote it a few weeks before it's released. Then you've got to continue creating content after it's been released to promote it. It's a lot. And I'm not saying that DistroKid does all of this work for you, but they do make it a lot easier for us with the free promotional tools that they offer. The one I use most is Hyperfollow. It's essentially a free landing page or a link tree. It's super clean. You could link maybe your latest latest video, your latest single, other important links you'd like to lead people to. I also use promo cards whenever I release a single. Just select the single that you would like to promote and it'll auto generate a few different uh, options for you to choose from. Go with this showcase. It's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. You keep 100% of your streaming royalties. So many other tools that they offer for someone who's independent. They're, they're made for us. And there is a discount linked in the description of this video if you would like to join. Let's look at Source Audio Ventress Dual Reverb. And by the way, this is the only dual reverb in the bunch, something to consider. So you'll see that if I go to A, I have my E-Dome. I can of course change this to whatever reverb here that I want. I could change my parameters on this reverb. Those will be saved. I could go over to B, do the exact same thing, you know, maybe change whatever, and then go to A plus B. And those two settings have been saved and, and combined together as a dual reverb. And so when you're on A plus B, you could use mix control one and control two as like a mini mixer. This is like the overall mix and then the mix of A, mix of B. Let's take a look at some standout algorithms here. Firstly, E-Dome. This is the pedal's largest, most lush sounding reverb. So much like Cathedral on context to the, the first pedal that we looked at. Great for ambience, just a different flavor. Offspring, this is one that you could kind of get to sound like a harp depending on how you tweak it. So I would say like a very unique and specific setting. And also keep in mind that there's a MIDI in for tempo sync. So if you'd like to get, you know, rhythmically precise, that's an option as well. Our second veteran, Empress Reverb, let's take a closer look at this one. It might be considered old, but do not underestimate this pedal. This is actually one of my favorite of the bunch. So let's scroll up to modulated, which is the blue setting on modulation. This is a great way to make essentially any part sound huge. In this case, thing one is modulation rate. So turning up this knob makes the modulation faster. Around 70%, it can get really crazy sounding, especially with higher depth settings. And thing two is the modulation depth. And so turning up the depth increases the pitch bend in the modulation. If you want, you could also connect an expression pedal to Empress Reverb. Let's go to the ghost setting. And no, that's not the uh, Andrew Huang 
you know, ghost pedal. This is another setting that just kind of sounds great on everything, but again, it makes it sound specific. The tail consists of resonant and modulated elements that mold together to create this sort of like haunted sound. There's also some compression in there so that it won't blow up on you with high decay and resonant settings. So that's, you don't have to worry about that. In this case, thing one is the modulation rate, which increases the speed of the modulation in the reverb tail. And thing two is resonance, AKA spookiness, which increases the Q of the resonance. Also in terms of CV, Empress Reverb accepts CV from zero to five volts. 10 reverb pedals, this was like a colossal information video for you guys, I think that's enough. Always a pleasure to present gear to you guys, use the affiliate links. If you're interested in anything here, like, subscribe, do all the things, and hope to see you in the next video.